you know, I almost didn't want to do this recording with you guys because I've been really happy with everything TNA is doing right now. And for the most part, the month of December, with the exception of the television shows, uh, definitely not not feeling those. But I almost didn't want to get into this, but it kind of goes into a series of of previous podcasts that I've done talking about hard to kill the build and you know thank god they have these these partnerships with new japan triple a you know because if they were just stuck to working with their current roster i think they would be in some some deep shit with the way that they've they've put the card together but you know briefly i was thinking i think the call your shot gauntlet i think it should be implied going forward that the winner of that is going to hard to kill you know, that's kind of what they did with Jordan Grace. Obviously, they weren't shooting television, so she wasn't going to carry the trophy around. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, just just saying, hey, the winner of the call your shot, instead of doing the call your shot stipulation, carrying the trophy around, they're going to hard to kill for the championship. I think that is um, something they should do going forward. Because, you know, if they choose the, to, to phone it in for the final quarter of 2024 on television, uh, which they've always done, but this year feels brutal because people are excited for Hard to Kill and they want new, new uh, announce match announcement. They want news. They they just want to know who we're going to see, who's going to show up. Like we still don't feel like we have the card and the the shows this weekend. So there's been just more more of a magnifying glass on the way that they've chosen to do television. And you know, I I can't believe that they got. If you guys can hear my cat in the background, I apologize. Um, meowing because he's he has to sleep in the laundry room at night. Um, I, I'm surprised on this last episode they got 65,000. I would have thought no more than like 30,000, honestly, watching these best of TNA shows and everything they're doing. So, I you know, I, I got to reel it back here a little bit because, as I said, I think they're doing some really good work right now, especially with social media they're putting some real effort into it which is what i you know have wanted to see obviously but it still doesn't you know negate the fact that hard to kill you know there, there's just still so much up in the air about what we're gonna see and you know that's part of the excitement as well like we don't know what we're gonna see but in this particular particular situation people just want more so you know, as I said, I think winning the call your shot and and that person going to the main event of Hard to Kill is something they have to really, really do going forward. Um, and another thing that I, I was really thinking about when Final Resolution rolls around, because they're you know they want to be so random for whatever reason. Uh, I mean, they they have been really random in 2023. I would say 70 percent of the year, they just they they almost took a Tony Khan approach. I think of like let's just give them really good matches. And we kind of got away from creative, but TNA fans don't really tune in for the the five star matches. Like, yeah, we enjoy them, but you know, TNA has always been that mix of good wrestling and good creative. You know, that's that's what that's what I've always felt they needed to like continue to focus on instead of trying to lean too heavily one way or another. I I've, I've always thought that was their their niche that they should. They, they should carve. I always say, what's what's the target audience? That's your target audience should be someone that likes wrestling and creative. You know that that really wants that doesn't want to go too far one way or another. They don't want to go totally sports entertainment, and they don't want to go Tony Khan sports based rep, wrestling Japanese. Freaking taking a spot in the middle of every single match to voluntarily chop each other in the chest and all that shit. You know, but they you know. <sighs> Final re- resolution was very random. And the way I see it, if you want to be random, tap into being random. Final resolution should be a joke. You know, you can do Joker's Wild, which I always thought was a good concept that they delivered really poorly. You could do Joker's Wild. You could do, uh, I don't remember what the one show is they did where it was designed to get Tessa and Sammy Callahan to wrestle each other. It was the one where everyone, uh, I, I mean, like 20 people watch this show. So, you know, I can only imagine it was one of the Impact Plus shows where all the tag teams were comp- comprised of of um, enemies. 
So Tessa was Sammy's partner, and that was the only team that they promoted. <laughs> so that's why you knew they were going to win. It was just the most telegraphed thing in the world. They they had this really nice, um, uh, I guess, randomizer video that came out of just randomizing all the wrestlers' faces, and then it landed on Sammy and and um, Tessa Blanchard, which made no sense because the team weren't the teams weren't random; they were enemies teaming together, but neither here nor there, whatever. But if you guys remember that concept where there was a kind of a mini tag team tournament where they had a team with their enemies. And then um, I don't remember the exact format, but I just know in the very end, the winning team had to wrestle each other. And then that they got a title shot, I believe. So could you imagine doing that for, it would be pretty difficult to do with the knockouts, but I mean, it, you, you can do that for the world title, X division, tag team championship. Like you could figure out some way, some way to do it. But that's just another way of tapping into, hey, we're going to be random. We're just going to give you matches. So let's let's lean heavier into that, so that there are implications for hard to kill. And then you know the third idea, and this is all like fantasy booking, you know. I get people like, oh, you're you're not in the industry. You're acting like you're in the industry. I have, I've never acted like that. I've always said I am a fan with a fucking podcast, a podcast and a channel that happen to do pretty decent. I'm just in a, you know, I just have an opinion on pro wrestling, but I'm. How can I really know what the fuck I'm talking about if I'm not in the industry? I, I agree with that. Okay, so it's all kind of fantasy booking, but the last idea I kind of had was. Do you remember they did the triple threat revolver match that was designed to get Josh Alexander over? Where they used to, I don't even remember that exact format, but they they would come down in like groups of three or whatever and have a triple threat. And I think what happened was when someone got eliminated, someone else came down and replaced them, kind of a kind of gauntlet style. I feel like it was something along those lines, but I know it was a really, you know random revolving match with different X division competitors. And I think it was kind of put together for, um, you know, Josh, to that's, that's what they do with Josh go out there and wrestle good matches. You know, they're, they're trying to get him over that way, you know, and there was even like that gauntlet style match that they did where Tessa Blanchard one years ago that, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> with that, when she beat Brian cage in the final, because that's that's all anyone remembers. They remember Rich Swan having a little run when they were trying to recreate the Kofi Kingston stuff. Um, but but Tessa had won in the finals. You know, you can even do some kind of like championship number one contender gauntlet. But there there are just some ways that you can play into being random and and make it work for you, and really use that final resolution to to kind of build into hard to kill. And you're going to want to watch final resolution because. There's so many hard to kill implications that go into it, you know? So that's just me kind of like spitballing. Of course it is strictly fantasy booking at the end of the day. They probably know more than I do and know better than I do, but I do know that the fans haven't been excited in the way they have handled hard to kill because they relied on the TNA name selling the tickets. So you can go on any social media platform and see that the majority of the fans have not been happy with with the build, but there are some ways to lean into the randomness and make it work for you.